I can do that too, Adam. Well, you gotta have a sip before you begin. But is your cup Halloween? No. 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 It's Duncan. Mine is, uh, mine is Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. It says Everybody Scream. And it's got a, you know, Boogie and the gang. It was cool because it's just Jack at the beginning. And you know, then it turns into everybody when you put the hot the hot stuff in amazing. it. Amazing. You know we're live, right? We're live. Oh, oh shoot. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 289 of the Lured Up Podcast, where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Today is Saturday, October 28th, 2023. We are streaming this live on twitch.tv slash Pokemon Professor Network. I'm your host, Ken Pescatore. That's Adam Tuttle. Adam. Hey, everyone. Hello. What's happening? I feel like I got younger. Nice. I feel like I'm one of those, those like, up-and-coming influencers right now. Why? Because you shaved off 10 years shaved. from your life? <laughs> <laughs> Adam's looking like a young lad. You look like Trainer Joey right now. You're ready to uh, catch some bugs on Route 1. That's what you're looking like. All I need is that fantastical hat and uh, a bug net. Yeah, yeah. And and a cup of Johto's finest. From nice. Courtesy of Good Morning Johto. Shout out to everyone in the chat already. Maddie G, Kitty Pokemon's a lot. VA wrestler in the house. What's up, everybody? Woo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a party. Welcome. Yes, Freeze a party, right? If you're listening to the audio, you can catch this on VOD on our YouTube channel. And if you wanted to catch up with the audio, you can listen to that wherever your favorite podcasts are. I would say sold, but you don't have Streaming? to pay. Streaming, downloadable. All that good stuff. But, Adam, it is the holiday season, and we're going to recap uh, the last week the of gameplay. It's the spooky season. It's not the holiday season. It's still holiday. Season. Halloween is a holiday. The holiday day. season starts with Thanksgiving. I was going to say Christmas, but you're saying that, wait, then why doesn't it? It's the holiday season, everyone. Because, <laughs> because, it, because Thanksgiving, like, kicks it off, and then it's like, then it, everything No way, goes. man. Uh, November yeah. 1st, Christmas music. Christmas music. I'm dreaming. We're going to recap the last week of gameplay, including Halloween Part 1. We have the kickoff of Halloween Part 2. This has been a good week or two of gaming. It's been awesome. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Adam, I'd like to hear your hot takes. Um, oh, you'll get them. On you'll get them. They're hot. On the plethora They're like of a hot costumes. Cake. They're <laughs> it's hot. amazing. Uh, we'll talk about the latest in-game and community news and issues. Uh, silence from Go Stadium. Crickets from Zygarden and the rise of Dracoviz, which is uh, kind of the up-and-coming force in the PvP world. We'll talk about that. Uh, party play is definitely being used by a lot of trainers, but that doesn't mean it's a good time. I like it. I do. Uh, and Twitter is still bent about the whole Wayfarer ladder policy thing, and we're going to talk about that and uh, pull up some examples and all they that good stuff. They just need to get either get off their high horse trying to climb the ladder or just... Cl keep climbing up the ladder. You know, you know, there's there's a lot to talk about there. I, I I do want to touch on a bunch of stuff, so we'll we'll talk about it. Um, Mark in the chat Ken says wanting uh, to touch stuff. Oh my gosh, got the new this shiny is the podcast buddy. for you. You got a shiny buddy? I don't have a shiny buddy. I just have Kyogre. I have a Hundo Kyogre as my buddy right now. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. I was like, what? Yes, yes. Uh, for the Fi audio listeners, I think he's talking to the chat. I am talking to the chat. Fisher J <laughs> saying, uh, uh, getting ready to grind some Shadow Lugia. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, man, yeah, we, we got a battle party, whoop whoop, coming, so uh, stay tuned for that. Nice. It looks like Jamal or Chris is in the chat from Wayspotters. That's awesome. It's probably Jamal. Jamal's always hanging out with I us. I know, I know. Uh, the November content update has aired and arrived on Twitter, and uh, we'll talk about it. There's, it'll be another busy month. You know, the Niantic does not relent with the onslaught of events and things happening, and November is going to be no different. We'll dig into that. Uh, we also are getting some good heads up on November events, which is pretty good. So we have details already for Festival of Lights, which is going to be coming in the second week of November. So we're getting some good heads up so we can prepare. We like to see that. And then we'll wrap things up with a Poke Battler raid guide and battle party for Shadow Lugia because that is all the rage this weekend so we'll get there yeah but is it like purple and like actually it is the shadow look lugia man it's not the gale of darkness no and if it's not is it really shadow lugia or is it just like 
team go Rocket Shadow. No, you it, know what look, I'm saying? Look, man, that's a whole different look, universe. Man. Yeah, it's but a whole let me tell you. Universe. Yeah, but they brought Jesse and James. That's from a Pokemon verse. That is also a whole different universe from that universe. Oh, okay. So explain Detective Pikachu. That's another universe as well. There's I'm a multiverse saying, here, man. They 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 brought it in from the game. They brought it in from the movie. That's a movie. That's not even a game. Look, I think Pokemon Go, the world of Pokemon Go kind and of And they brought is, Meltan. Meltan, that's Pokemon Go specific, and they brought it into the rest of the games. Pokemon Go is like, I don't know, it is kind of like the... The, like the stepchild? When, no, like when the Doctor Strange of the Marvel Universe, like kind of where everything, there's like this amalgamation of all the different corners of the Pokemon Universe, which is kind of neat, but... No, we're we're all we're all yeah. Kitty Pokemon's a lot says it's a it's the multiverse. It is the multiverse. It really is. There's a lot going on. But uh, Adam, how's your week been? How's uh, how's New it's Hampshire? The, dude, the weather has uh, it was cold and now all of a sudden it's warm again. Here yeah, it feels Jersey, like so. summer. And then tomorrow, today's supposed to be beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. Like I plan on going outside for sure, getting that, getting those those rays of sunshine before tomorrow when it gets rainy and gross and. Uh, isn't fun anymore. Yeah, no. The weather, the weather has been great. Uh, I've had a couple weeks of like sixty plus kilometer on the adventure sink, which is nice. Uh, so I'm doing okay there. I'm trying to get you know definitely uh, like focused gameplay time in. Uh, Sarah, my girlfriend, has been like really digging on Pokemon Go, so it's like she's motivating me to like be like, hey, let's go outside and play Pokemon. It's like I thought you'd never ask. Let's do that. That sounds great. You're like, are so, we supposed to? We're supposed to go. We're supposed to cook dinner and stuff. No, no, no. We got to catch Pikachu. He's he's in a costume. I'm telling you, that shiny. Let's go, dude. We're she's uh she's walking a Phoebus right now to evolve. Like she's going through the motions. She's like, dude, I need K's. I need some KMs. I'm like, this is amazing. It's so good. It's so good. No, but like uh no, she's she's going through the 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 motions of starting to fill out the decks. She's like, I really want to keep a living deck. She heard us talking about living decks on the show, so she's like, I just want to keep one of everything. She's you know, we'll be driving somewhere, and she's like, "Can you make a right turn up here? There's a there's a Valor gym. I could drop a guy in." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, yes." You're like just a little out of the way. I'm like, no problem, baby. Anything for you. <laughs> but no, it's uh, it, it's it's been good. Have you uh? Have Meanwhile, you... your doctor's like, Ken had an appointment yeah, exactly. five minutes ago. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Are you playing that Pokemon again? It's like, sorry, Doc. Uh, no, it's uh, it's been it's been really good. I've had I've had a good time with the game over the past couple weeks. Actually, it's been it's been pretty good. You know, it. I still don't feel like seasons of like Adventures of Bound is like. I don't know. I don't. It doesn't have like seasonal cohesion necessarily to me. Yeah, because um, you get all the spooky stuff involved, and it's and it's like. That to me is what's going on right now. That's the event. Like yeah. that's what's going on. And oh, adventures abound. It looks cool. Yeah. But what am I doing for an like there's tasks that say walk a kilometer. Yeah. Is that what they mean by adventures Adven- abound? <laughs> Here's a task to walk a kilometer. Get out there and go. Dude, all right. We'll we'll talk about party play. Red meanwhile, line in the chat. What's up? Good morning. Meanwhile, I just put it in my pocket. And I walk around all day at work, and then they just go off. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, you're you're adventuring. I was adventuring. You're adventuring at work. while at work, which is which is nice. But uh, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's let's get right into oh, it. Oh, we do. We haven't even started the show. We have. We have. Oh, we okay, have. okay. But let's talk about Halloween Part One that wrapped up. Uh, this was the grave art and fan tump and all that kind of stuff uh, that ended on um, two days ago on the twenty sixth. We had a grave art. Uh, is it Grievard? Gravard? Uh, I like showcases. Graveyard. 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 There's no Y. There, there, no, I know. There Grieve, should have been Grieve, a Y. Graveyard. Grieveard. Grievard. 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 Let's let's pronounce all of them wrong. Ekins, Zabat, Alolan, Me, Oath, uh, Goosely. Uh, all right, Haunter, Spinner. The Yule Picks. The, yeah. the Yule Picks. No, the, the, the cha- Yule Picks. The Chase in Part 1 was definitely the Phantom Shiny. Uh, spotlight and, uh, hour was uh, this Tuesday. How'd you did do? Did you get one? I got did one. Did anybody? Did I anybody in the chat get one? Yes, I. Because uh... I dropped several lures. <laughs> I dropped an incense, and I played, and I even drove through 
and doing something I'm not supposed to. I mean, okay, I'm sorry. I I, I slow rolled. I was a passenger slow rolling through a graveyard. Oh, how about that? For like so, and it's like no lights, just trees covered. Super scary. Super. You were immersed. Like you that were immersed. was the most Halloween thing. I was literally immersed. I was going like two miles an hour, and just boop, not shiny, boop, not shiny, and th- like there were so many. It was almost like the graveyard knew. It was like this is the spot. No, I and uh, it was intense. I caught so many. Not a single hundo, not a single shiny, and I have done so many researches, and I've gotten the. The 79 or whatever it is, but I know it's like the ending is 79. It's supposed to be 81 for the hundo. I got like a lot of the 79s, and I'm like, come on, yeah. can I just get a hundo? Yeah, Maddie G got three total, one from the spotlight hour. So again, that doesn't make any sense because I think it's, it's elusive. <laughs> it is something that doesn't exist. I uh, I actually played spotlight hour in Red Bank with Sarah, and which was really nice, and it was cool because you know. The Red Bank crew is awesome. They're always out there playing the usuals. And Spotlight Hour typically isn't something that we all do together as a group because everyone plays a little bit different. And it was nice kind of walking through Red Bank. I saw Ken with hair. I saw Shiny Carol. I saw OG Big Nug. I saw Bright Friends. Shout out to all the Red Bank locals. But we were all kind of doing our own thing. And everyone that I ran into was like, Fans, Shiny Fan Sump is a myth. It just doesn't exist. Yep. And I mean, I it doesn't exist. I had my head buried in the phone the whole time. I was playing hard, giggity, and I just, I was like, I'm, this, this isn't going to happen for me. And I was like, you know what? Let's start walking to the car. With four minutes left in spotlight hour, I got the shiny. So I was, I was very, very excited to 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 get this little baddie right here. I was very, very, very excited. Uh, but we also had paid timed research for five bucks. We had a uh, free time five research. bucks. Yeah, man. Do uh, we get a do we get a Galarian Mr. Mime? No, we had two timed researches, one for Spirit Tome, one for Graveyard. Uh, we had a couple different event bonuses with extra candy and stuff like that. Uh, and some raids that were a little bit lackluster, except for uh, Guzzlord was, you know, Guzzlord was good. Guzzlord um, was great, man. Specifically Solos. to me, you know, I got the shiny. I was, I was pretty content with that. I didn't really want to do any more. And then I made a highlight on our Instagram talking about its CP. And then I do one at my work. And I was like, no way. It says 1650. I know what that means. I know what that means. Yes, Adam got <laughs> It was almost the, like because I called Adam it into existence. Adam got the hundo. You, I yeah, got the hundo. You, you, what is it called? You, uh, you, when you, when manifested you, you manifested the shiny, dude. I mean, the hundo. That, imagine if it was a shundo. Oh, that, that would be been, wild. That would. I, I after that, I tried to do as many as possible, even solo, which you know is annoying. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fisher J in the chat says, "I was jogging during raid hour for that shiny. Who does that?" <laughs> I've done that, uh, dude. I've done uh, that, dude. Remember I, when I went running and I, like I just throw on eggs and I'm like, yeah, let the Go Plus no, do its thing, dude. I'm telling you, it it's. The, the gameplay has been really good. I think a lot of people in my community are kind of getting in as what they can before we know the weather turns, you know, because it's been nice again this week. We had some cold, like a little cold cold spell, but it's been so great. It's going to be like mid-70s today here in Jersey. So it, it's really nice to be able to get out there and play, and the gameplay has been supportive of that grind. So uh, I can't complain at all. It's been It's been really, really good. But uh, that was Halloween Part 1, but we also have uh, Halloween Part 2. The costume event. The, <laughs> There's lots of costumes. The the costume event, which uh, was... Uh, look, I I know I'm definitely into it. I want to hear your hot take. But this, this kicked off right after Halloween Part 1 on the 26th. This goes straight through Halloween on the 31st. Pikachu wearing Tricks and Treats costume, Gengar wearing a Tricks and Treats costume, and then we also had the return of Vulpix in the costume, Piplup wearing the Mischief costume, uh, and we also have a uh, Pumpkaboo wearing the Spooky Festival costume. So we had a couple return, but Shiny Zerua has definitely been the chase. It's been a lot of fun going after that. And my uh, buddy being Zerua and Meowskarada, I've been able to pinpoint immediately so i would highly suggest changing your buddy to something big 
Yes. Or that's, very something that out, that stands out above the crowd. That's actually a really good pro tip. Even I, if you got to shout yeah, out loud. Yeah. No, I I have Kyogre. I've been walking Kyogre, so it's like obviously if you see a Kyogre on the map, you know, <laughs> you know that it's uh you know that it's a Zerua. Uh, Gengar in the wild. Have you seen any of those? Those are fun. I have. I have. Yeah. They stand out. Yep. So you That's been pretty good. Timed research. Additional candies are all there. Uh, you know, one star raids, ghastly, mischievous, phantom. I think there has been enough phantom in the wild. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shiny hunt this in raids. I don't know. I, I would, I would, would? shiny hunt this in general. Re- but uh, it, yeah, you're gonna, so if I see one, I'm gonna do it. Yes. Well, Adam, anytime you say you're gonna do a raid, I'm gonna say go do the raid because I want you to do more raids. So that that works. That works. Yeah, I've seen uh, almost none of the bombardier. Well, bomb- Isn't there bombardier? No, to be? that's not yet. That's coming soon. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Okay, so I've been like freaking out, being like, I see a, I see a three star egg, but it's a shadow, yeah, or it's a Gengar, I mean, <laughs> or it's a Gengar. And I have been doing the, uh, the shadows. So I, I've done uh, Mag, uh, Magmar, Electabuzz, but I already have the hundreds of those, so it's kind of like. Eh. No, see, I, I keep the, uh, the shadow and purified living decks. So I'm loving all the new shadows. It's been great. I am not loving it. The <laughs> only one that looks, there's one that looks really cool. <sighs> Forgot its eyes. I just saw it and I was like, "Whoa, that's really cool." Oh, Ghastly looks badass. It looks so yeah, good. Yeah, I think eyes. it's Ghastly. Uh, field research has Galarian Yamask. That's a chase for a lot of people. Phantom also in uh, in. Yep, in... I've done every yep. single Phantom, and I have done all of the evolved tasks. I have wasted so many candies evolving from Drifloon. Yeah, the stickers have been great. How did you? Uh, how was your spirit to him? Anything good? That's such a good shiny, no, man. I, that, that was bad. That's like one of the one of the coolest shinies in the game, uh, for sure. I, I've 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 been on that chase. I really wish I could have got that. I like that they keep bringing it back, though. That's that's is probably one my... enough though? One a year? No, no. What else could they do? Put it in field research because then then people are um, gonna end up with a hundred. I feel like I feel like if they did. So you get like they give you one of like, let's say like that, and like we didn't even we haven't even seen a uh, ninjask. Ooh yeah. You know what I mean? Like something like that. Like any of like the highlight Pokemon that are you know hard to get, like Grievard, all those things, those should be in a, a you know hey here you go for free here's one of everything, and then if you want to double up and make that a, do it again, here's a paid time research for all those things again. I kind of like that. So it's not that just... we hear you're given one, mm. but if you want an additional chance here, well, that way it's not like you're pe- you're like yeah you know yeah yeah, I mean? yeah. You're, the the FOMO is quelled by at least getting it one of everything, and then right, you know, you could pay. See, but we we saw with was it Phantom or, or one of them where it was. Every single spawn or every single encounter in the research is the same Pokemon. And it's yes. like, all right, cool. I get five additional checks or something like that. But I kind of like your idea. Put all those uniques in there. Give me one shot at each. I kind of dig that. I think that's kind yeah. of a that's And then same cool thing, thing, like, you know, somebody's favorite is Vulpix. Somebody's favorite is Pikachu. Like, my mom loves Pikachu. You know what I mean? Like, give her another chance if she wants it, you know? You know, it, it's funny. I'm not. I don't want the extra chance of Pikachu. I'll tell you that. The, Can I just opt out a, a dollar, everyone? Just like, so bad. <laughs> I'll pay you a dollar not to show me Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me the give me the $8 research that gives me a Galarian Mr. Mime and take out the Pikachu. You know, it, it's funny, and, and a little, little side tangent here. You know, I was conversing with Sarah about how everyone has a favorite Pokemon, and no matter what, you could think that a Pokemon is silly or not attractive or dumb, but best believe that somewhere, someone, that's someone's favorite Pokemon. So Sarah is really into Tangela because that was her first buddy Pokemon. She just hit best best buddies with it. We went down a rabbit hole on YouTube the other night watching Tangela videos. We were watching, like, competitive VG Tangela analysis, and I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> She's like, I just like Tangela. Its shoes aren't attached to anything. It's like... This is amazing, so funny. All right, that was my side note. It's just a, it's just a wiggle, a wiggle. Dude, she's uh, like, what is? Thing. She's like, what does its face look like? What are those eyeballs attached to? Does it even have legs? I don't know. It's amazing. It was so good. That's hilarious. So, does she like Tangrowth at all? N- she, she's like, I don't know if I can evolve this. She goes, I think I need. She only has one Tangela. She's like, I'm not gonna evolve this because Tangela is so important to me. I go fest this year. I bought her uh, Tangela sitting cutie. 
You know what I mean? So oh, it's that's like cute. we're watching the video. She's holding the Tangela plush. I was like, what is happening in my life right now? This is so crazy. <laughs> you found your person. I that's did. What, that's I, what, that's what I happened. totally did. Uh, I also got the uh, Vulpix with the costume shiny. Have it up on screen right now for the video. Oh, viewers. I did not catch that, that one. That is a good looking shiny. I love it. I love it with the little green feetsies. Yeah, so did you cute. get the, the shiny safari hat, Evie? The, no, I didn't get that oh, because, uh, 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 you know, I wasn't at there. I wasn't in Barcelona. That's a good-looking shiny. Yeah, if you need a good-looking shiny, that's a good Yes, look. yes. Paulie got the shiny costume Gengar off research. Ooh, that's a good if you, one. If you watch uh, Cricket, one of Cr- Cricket's latest videos, uh, I'm in there like halfway through. I got the shiny. Yeah, Adam. So, I know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fisher J goes, humble brag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but Halloween Part 2 is also accompanied by a Team Go Rocket Takeover. This is always a good event. Uh, it says, sinister shadows abound this Holloway season. Team Go Rocket returns. Giovanni partners with Shadow Regigigas and Shadow Lugia, uh, making its Shadow Raid debut. So this is also Ooh. mirroring the same timeline, the 26th through the 31st. We have Shadow Regigigas. I have not defeated all my team leaders yet. I'm still on the hunt for Sierra. I've had Arlo and Cliff just constantly over and over I don't over understand because I think the game is giving you Cliff because it knows you can't handle it. Dude, that was one time. It was one time. Was <laughs> every like, time was, I see, every was, time I see Cliff, I make sure to battle it because I'm like, was, Ken wouldn't battle this right was, now. <laughs> it was like one time three years ago, and Adam won't let it, won't let me go, won't let it go. Um, so, yeah, but it's so funny. Every time I see Cliff, I just think of Ken, so and I'm funny. like, he's not, he's not doing that one. So he's not doing that one. Giovanni having Shatter Regigigas. I've seen a lot of creators, Poke Daxi, I think maybe even uh, Trainer Tips. Saying like, hey, don't catch this. Hold on to your, you know, team go rocket research till the next time so you could double up. Have you ever not caught a Giovanni ball, you know, shadow Pokemon to roll it over to the next season? Like, have you ever done that? Oh, I've always no. caught it every time. I've always caught it every time. One, because I wouldn't be able to like handle the eyelid twitching uh, of seeing the unclaimed research, the unfinished Listen, research. That is me every day. I can't okay. Do it. Can't do it. Because I got to 19, and it was like 12.01 when I realized. And went, like I was like, oh, shoot. I went to go feed my oh. buddy, and uh, it went back to zero. I'm like, I will never get shiny Jirachi. <laughs> I will never get this. I, I've just kind of accepted fate. I'm like, Amazing. I'll try. But it's been like it's been like three or four. No, it's been like six, seven. How many? How long has that been out? It's been that know. long. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, Shadow Lugia, can't, can't as of today, available this weekend. So that'll be a good one. I'm going to be uh, going out with my son. My son is a Lugia fan, so we'll be going out. He's I like, thought he was a Charizard fan. Actually, he's he you know he's a uh, he's actually he's moved on from Charizard to Rayquaza. Rayquaza is now his favorite, and okay. he was very excited. He has a Goku bed, a 14, 15, 15, which uh, he just powered up. He's not level fifty yet, but he's maxed it out per his level. And he just got it over uh, 4,000 CP. So, like, at school, shouldn't have done this, Josh. I'm calling you out. But I get a text in the middle of the day. He's like, I did it. My request is over 4,000 CP. I'm like, dude, you should be in math class right now. He's like, I'm working with numbers. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he mega evolved it. It was over 6,000. He's like, this is the greatest thing ever. But, no, we'll be going after Shadow Lugia today. Uh, but here's the new lineup of the Shadow Pokemon. We discussed this last week. Uh, Ghastly, Rhyhorn, Rhyhorn, Barboach, Cranidos, Shieldon, Drillbur, Litwick. These are some good, cool shinies, uh, uh, shadows that you could get the shinies on. So it's like, go for it. Go for it, for sure. For sure. I, I've i had a good... This isn't a necessarily a new one, but I'll pull up. I got the shiny Shadow Bellsprout from Arlo. <laughs> So that was uh, that was pretty fire. I was very excited about that for sure. Yeah, I have not seen a single shiny from any of the Team Go Rocket people. Yeah, Nidorino, Nidorina in uh, three star. I did raids. see a Wild Nido King. That's that was kind of cool, dude. I... It was a lot smaller than I thought, and then like it's even huge. in the catch screen, it was smaller. Really? Yeah, it was weird. Wow. Uh, team, yeah. don't forget to TM away frustration. Ooh. I feel like I'm so, just transferring them instead of wasting my TMs. So here's here's my process, and, and this is what I recommend. So 
because I keep the living decks, I'll go through my inventory. I do a search string of shadow, comma, purified, comma, ampersand, so and, and then I sort by recent. And then I go through my recents and like, let's say my latest caught shadow is ghastly. So then I'll put ghastly after the ampersand and and show the, the evolved forms and I'll see, do I have everything in that family line, shadow and purified? If not, I evolve up, I tag them, I save them, I star them, do whatever. Then I purify everything just because I'm a weirdo. This is like the only thing I spend my stardust on. I purify everything that I don't need. I transfer it away. And then my inventory is nice and clean based on what I have in my shadow and purified decks. And here I am just powering up uh, Guzzlord. Exactly. And then I'll do an at frustration search in the search bar and it'll bring up all Pokemon in your inventory that have frustration. And then I literally go one by one and just wipe out the move. I don't even care about putting the correct move on it at that point. I just go through them all, TM it away onto the next TM, 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 TM. It's nice. It clears out my TM inventory. I end up deleting so many TMs that this is a nice way to actually get some use out of it without actually just burning them without just deleting them. So um, that's been really good. Uh, getting back to the event, uh, we have Tyran- uh, Larvitar, Sandile, Ponyard, Vullaby, Dino, Pancham, Salandit in eggs, uh, 12K eggs. And then we had some uh, field research that gives mysterious components, which is a nice little uh, bonus too. So I love Team Go Rocket Takeovers. I enjoy doing the rockets. I enjoy doing grunts. I like the more frequent balloons. Now, how do you feel about Team Go Rocket grunts clogging up Pokestops because if you don't have a Go Plus or a, you know or Go Plus Plus, it's pretty annoying that every time you want to spin a stop, you have to wait for the person you know the, the the grunt to come out. You have to get through the text, exit out. It's it's four extra steps or something like that. It's kind of annoying. So I, know I you- do not enjoy the Team Go Rocket experience. Is it the battling that you don't like, or is it just the annoyance that they're clogging up gameplay? It's kind of like everything. It's frustrating, pun intended, because you have to, you know, frustration. Uh, It causes a lot of frustration. It's just time. It's just time. They, They take up time. And it's like that time I want to be checking for... I want to be checking new shinies. I want to be checking all and catching all these Pokemon. And if you don't have a Go Plus, I I feel horrible. Yeah. Like yeah. like that that's what you're choosing. It, it's it's like you have two separate things and it's you just you need to be doing both at the same time. But again, I don't want to be Go Plusing potential shinies that I could be very excited about seeing on screen because that's happened before where I catch it and i'm like wow that's upsetting that i caught it without seeing it yeah yeah. or i didn't catch it and i look in my journal and i'm like oh yeah no i i feel you i feel you oscar in the chat thanks so much for the follow appreciate y'all um no it's uh my my son was saying to me that if he's out in red bank where there's you know if i pull up i'm in red bank right now right so if I pull up my phone so the video viewers can see, there's a lot of stops. There's stops everywhere, and you see a lot of grunts. My son was just like, I'm just not going to spin the ones that have grunts because I don't want to click through the thing. I'll just wait. So he ends up getting less items. And, like, that's kind of annoying. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of frustrating, Adam. I stole your joke. I stole your joke. No, it's uh, just there's a lot of frustration around the subject. No, it's all right. Three <laughs> times, that's enough. It's, start, I'm starting to get frustrated about this now. It's so this is bad. so frustrating. Oh my god, help! The frustration. No, but uh, I I thoroughly enjoy the doubling up of events with Halloween event giving us tons of new spawns, tons of shiny chases, tons of costumes. I know you're not into it, but I love the costume shiny chase. I'll go after them every time. I just can't stand the transferring process. I also don't like that when you transfer Pokemon, it lumps X extra large, extra extra small, and event Pokemon together. So it'll say that is so frustrating. But you know what I'm talking that is, about. That that is something that kills me too. Because it's like, oh, there's several extra extra large. 
Pumpkaboo, we just had an entire event where we were dealing with extra, extra large and small. Please reduce them. Why are they so increased? Every single Pumpkaboo I catch is large. But I, every I know. one of them. I know. Well, it's every it, one of them can in, uh, innately big. It's naturally big. But the thing is, I want to keep my extra, extra large, extra, extra small, and I want to get rid of my event Pokemon. I know it would be an additional click, but separate that for me. Or have two buttons on that pop-up screen when you're doing your transfers. Keep the extra, keep the extra, extra large, or keep the event. Don't make me do it both, because I'll go through, like, a thousand Pokemon to transfer, and it'll be like, you've got, you know... You've got mail. Well, no, it'll say, like, you've got, uh, you know, <laughs> 54 event Pokemon and seven, you know, extra, extra large. It's like, ah. Oh, I do want to keep the seven, but I don't care about the event ones because I clicked on them to transfer them. Allow me to see something on the Pokemon screen like a shiny symbol or give me a costume symbol or put XXL on the Pokemon in the search, you know, in the inventory so I could see uh, see it before I click on it. That would help too. I don't know. They got to do some quality of life there. It's just a little bit annoying. But uh, I don't know. We'll keep it moving. But Adam, I want to couple, touch on a couple different things here. Kind of the, the state of the game, we're in the holiday season, at least here on the East Coast in the States, we're about to get the downturn of weather where things get cold. And we all know that when the game, when it's cold outside, less people come no, out. Yeah, nobody's out. So the game typically has to compensate some way, somehow. And Niantic has done a good job of continuously providing us with events, event after event, you know, new releases, all that kind of stuff. So there's been plenty to do. But we have a couple things that are happening in the game right now that kind of have the community at odds with each other a little bit. And we can start with PvP. We talked about this over the last couple of weeks. We had all the issues with Go Stadium kind of completely crumbling. People were, like, having a lot of faith in Zygarden as being, like, the next great thing. Uh, and now, because of the news of Go Stadium and, and Dracoviz kind of being in the mix, we saw Dracoviz kind of building up. So... I think that there's this weird vibe in the PvP community right now where they're kind of, uh, everyone's kind of looking for a home. The because, next big thing. Right, because you have a, this grand exodus from Go Stadium. You have Zygarden, which even their Discord has been pretty dead. Uh, and then now you have Dracoviz kind of coming up and, and being out of nowhere. So... What I do want to pull up uh, on the screen real quick here is, um, let me just turn the sound off, is an awesome tutorial video that Caleb Peng put out that kind of walks through the Dracoviz competitive side of how to create and manage tournaments. And I watched this video. I'll put the link in the description. I recommend everyone checks it out to get an idea of what Dracovis has to offer because I am fairly confident that this is going to be the platform of choice going forward. And you look at it now and you're like, whew, this looks really stripped down. It's not a lot of polish. It's very text-based. It's like not flashy at all. But it seems to function. And Caleb does a really good job of walking through all the different systems of the of of the tool and talks about, um, you know, just what you could do with it and, and how it all works. I'm just kind of skipping around in the video here, but it's not loading. But if you uh, if you go to dracoviz.gg, you can see that you can sign right in. They put Caleb's video right on the home page of it. That what kind of talks you through it. But I think okay. I think this is going to be it. It has links that you can also link in external brackets. Like if you use challenge, uh, you could put your links in there so people can follow along. It also has. Oh, that's cool. It, yep. It also has a uh, Swiss style brackets similar to Sylph. So that's all there. It has really nice visuals when you put in your party of six to see what your party is. You have a little bit more customization than what Sylph had offered uh, as far as how you're going to show. Like, do you want people to be able to see your CP? Like, all these different customization options, which which is really nice. I think this is going to be it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. And I really think... Um, this this could be the future of grassroots PvP for for Pokemon Go. It's it's really cool. 
it, it's really cool, and I'm I'm excited about it because, you know, the world, uh, the PvP world was rocked and let down pretty heavy from Go Stadium, and they need something. They need something that they can latch onto. They need something that they can kind of, you know, connect with and and be a part. And I'm going to pull the the video back up again, you can, so you can see what the uh, the bracket system looks like. They're showing uh, Caleb shows a a BTW. Uh, tournament that's in progress right now with like 26 trainers in it looks pretty beefy uh, but it's very similar swiss style bracketing to sylph so it's it is very familiar uh but caleb mentioned that the drake of his peeps said that other types of different eliminations and different types of bracketing will be coming down the road um and you know okay. te team based cool. yeah so i'm it's very promising that this is already happening and uh, i just think that it's worth getting into now, so at least we can kind of, uh, you know, get a head start on on figuring out where the community will be going. So I recommend at least signing up, watching the video, checking it out. Uh, it's going to be good. While we're talking about PvP, I do want to mention a new thing that we're going to be doing in our Discord. Um, if you support us on Patreon, you get access to our patron-exclusive Discord. In our Discord, we... Which is a fantastic place. Filled with fantastic people. We we do tournaments every month. We haven't last month because we just haven't figured out what the heck we're doing. So, uh, shout-out to Moko Wilson, who gave a great idea of something that he had saw on a different server that we're going to be adopting. And I'll announce it here, and this is going to be launching in November in our Discord, and we want people involved. We're going to be doing a region-based gym leader challenge via pvp where we're going to be up creating different pvp regions different regions that will make up based on our community we'll be assigning for the first time we'll be assigning gym leaders we're going to be breaking the gyms down by specific metas so each gym will have a specific type based meta and someone will have the role of gym leader and then through the PvP bracketing that we're going to be doing through the tournaments, people can then decide what region gym leader they want to challenge, use that meta, challenge the gym leader, and if they defeat the gym leader, they then become the gym leader of that region. As a reward, we're going to be getting enamel pins made, actual gym badges that we're going to be mailing out to the winners. The winners will then have a nice little badge that they can rep. They'll get a specific role in the Discord showing that they're a gym leader. And they'll hold that until the next month when other trainers can then challenge them to try to take the role from them of gym leader for that region. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be really exciting. I'm working out the details over the next week or so, uh, but that's the plan. And uh, we want to do something a little bit different than what we've seen with Swiss style brackets. Cause we love Swiss style brackets. It's been, it's a great foundation, but we want to make it a little bit more engaging, a little bit more personal, a little bit more fun. So if you want to check it out, check us out on Patreon, check us out in the discord. Uh, and that's coming in November. So super excited. So I just wanted to give a little tease on that. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, let me, um, I don't necessarily have to pull anything up here. Uh, but one thing, uh, other thing aside I did, from your pants, aside from my pants, <laughs> my pants on the ground. Um, I do want to talk about, uh, let me see here. Where's my, where's my links? Hold on a second. Hold everything. You They're in the notes, dude. Dude, you just gotta click it. I know, I know they are, and that's what I want to pull up here. Uh, another thing that's been been going on on Twitter for the next, I don't know, uh, for the last like month, forever. Well, since the Wayfarer ladder policy was released, was announced, is you have a lot of people that have been anti Wayfarer, and people say, oh, when you use the word anti, it makes it very divisive. But when I see someone especially someone like Zionic that has a platform saying like, hey, don't use Wayfair. Yeah, that's anti-Wayfair sentiment. That's not that's not pro anything. <laughs> that's anti. So you have some trainers out there that, are, you know, especially annoying when they have a platform saying, don't do Wayfair. It's a broken system. You'll get banned. And we've talked about this at nauseum on our socials, on the shows. But I saw something interesting and I'll love, you know, J.R.E.C. Wolf, you know, him and I are like professional thumb wrestlers on Twitter. It's all good. People are like, I don't like to see influencers battling with each other. It's like, yeah, well, normally it would be. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Pokemon Go 
for the worlds, you know, there's, you know, they're battling each other all the time. Right, right. So th- it's just part of the immersion. But there was a case of uh, someone on Twitter who received a, a ban or a suspension, right? And I'll call out Niantic for, for you know, people always say, oh, you're always pro-Niantic. Niantic screwed up huge with this. Guy receives a 30-day suspension for doing stuff in Wayfarer that was not per the criteria, receives a 30-day ban. He loses his mind. He posts on Twitter. Everyone rallies around him. Uh, Wayspotters jumps in and is like, let's see what you're talking about. Wayspotters finds out that this dude was, in fact, like doing some shenanigans. Uh, resubmitting things over and over and over. Um, You know, he even put up a thing like, oh, I kept resubmitting because I was hoping that the criteria changed rather than, like, doing research and finding out it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, seven times. Things were being denied, and then he would appeal it. The appeal would be denied, and he would resubmit, sometimes with the same photo. It was just clearly a, a misuse of the system. So Niantic sends him an email and says, hey, you're suspended for 30 days. Bam. 30 days goes by, he emails Niantic and says to Niantic, like, hey, it's been 30 days. What's the deal? I still can't get in. And Niantic replies going, oh, my bad. We had a typo. We meant to say 90 days. <laughs> so, oh, so, no. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's bad. <laughs> that was a total blunder on Niantic's wow. part. Uh, really not good at all. Like, not a good look, not a good anything. Just bad, 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 bad. So Yeah, that kind of feels do. like, well, since you asked, uh, actually, we don't want you to hang out and play. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and there's no defense of that. So when it comes to this story that we're talking about here, I'm not going to defend Niantic there because they screwed up, and that's bad, totally bad. However, JRE and a lot of Twitter – would jump to this guy's rescue, you know, uh, rescue like, look how bad Wayfarer is. Rah! It's bad. Wayfarer bad. And I'll pull up a tweet here from Jerry. And I'll read it here directly. Uh, where is it? Here. It says, the ladder is supposed to work as pictured, but they apparently like skipping steps. And, it, and he pulls up some pictures of uh, the ladder policy where he crops it perfectly at step one is a warning, step two is a 30-day suspension, and step three is a 90-day suspension, um, and step four, you have that walloping 10-year suspension, right? Okay. But what he what he's saying here is apparently they like to skip steps. So, of course, I had to chime in, and I said, <laughs> if you're going to post the policy itself, perhaps post the entire thing and not just the parts that Support your fear mongering. I love the word fear mongering. I'll use it every I time. I know, I know. You use I know. it as often I, as I, possible. I know, and people get so bent out of shape on Twitter, they're like, it's not fear mongering. It's like, yeah, it is. So uh here's a quote directly from the latter policy itself. It says, This policy may provide offenders with disciplinary actions proportional to the severity of their offense they perform. This means a first time offender can be punished with any of the disciplinary actions listed below, depending on how severe their offense was, end quote. OK, so right there, it says they can skip steps. So, yeah, mm-hmm. apparently they do like to skip steps because that's part of the policy itself. But Jerry, of course, failed to include that part because it doesn't fit his narrative. He just wants to poo poo on Niantic by saying, look, they're breaking their own policy. No, that is part of their policy. Then it brings up, and let me just continue what I put. I say the typo thing is a disaster. It appears your issue is with the policy itself. Uh, If Wayfair went directly to a 90-day suspension, I have confidence that the offense was significant. Even if they skipped the warning and went right to a 30-day, the offense would need to be pretty bad. So I can only imagine the kind of shenanigans that were going on for them to jump right to a 90. Getting back to the typo thing, yeah, super terrible error with really that's really unfortunate and comes with seriously bad optics. There's no no doubt about it. Typo, horrendous. Wayfair abuse, bad. Leaving out public info that debunks your fear mongering, on brand JRE. Okay, so that's what I that's what I said to him. Um, but I think it brings up a great conversation, and the conversation is, what should you get a warning about? I don't think you should get a warning if you submit one thing. That isn't per criteria. But if you if you submit two or three in a row that don't meet criteria, 
I think it's fair to get a warning because a warning yeah, is just yeah, that. Because, yeah, because yeah, then you're then you're you can be then it's known that hey, there's something you're doing that's not appropriate. It's right. not right. It doesn't follow the terms of service and all that jazz. Right. And then you can be like, well, let me take a step back and reflect. If you're a good, normal human being, you'll do that and reflect and be like, what did I do wrong? And you might even write into the Wayspotters podcast to try to help figure out what you did wrong. And I assure you they'll help. They'll help because they want. I 110% yeah. agree. Yeah. They will help. They, they want they want people to succeed in this. So, um, yeah, it's. Because if the board gets better for you, it gets better for me. Correct. Correct. I, Meaning I, if it gets better for everyone, everyone benefits. So. Right. So. Yeah. I think that Niantic has done a good job enforcing their ladder policy. I think a lot of people get bent out of shape about having actions taken against them. Who wouldn't? But if we go back about a month or two on Twitter, and Wayfair, uh, Wayspotters talked about this in their last episode, and I was cracking up. They called it approval gate. There was a time on Twitter when a lot of people who were upset at Niantic for various reasons, wanted to stick it to Niantic. And the way they chose to do that was by saying, I'm going to nominate everything and every review I do, I'm putting five stars. Get all the Pokestops in the game. Rah! And now they're all getting suspended for doing that. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my heart. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> it's like, you know... <laughs> I can't ban these people or suspend these people. We've got to use the, the right language. It's suspended. They're not getting banned because it's suspension. It's temporary. Yeah, a ban is a ban like, is permanent. you know, Suspe you're, you're, you're gone forever. Yeah. If you're suspended, Granted, you've it's got, a, you've it's got a, suspenders holding the, your pants it's a, up. It's you know? a 10-year suspension, so it's it's nearly permanent, but it's still a, <laughs> it's still a suspension. But I can't do this stuff myself. So when I see someone who three months ago was like, Screw Niantic, five star everything, even if it's a leaf on the ground or someone's, you know, toilet in their house, you know, five stars approved. And now they're feeling their own, you know, they're getting a taste of their own medicine. And to me, it's like the, it's like I see the cherubs flying above me. I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. It's it's amazing. I, I love it. So don't be scared of Wayfair. Don't get caught up in the madness online. But understand, just like anything else, you have to hold yourself accountable and be responsible for your actions. So if you nominate three things in a row that don't follow the criteria, yeah, you're subject to get a warning. You're not going to get a 30-day suspension because you nominated, you know, a bench that doesn't have a memorial or a historical thing associated with it. You'll get a warning. That's fair. That's part of the process. But these people that are out here saying, I've done nothing wrong and I've been suspended. But I've done nothing wrong. It's the suspension process is not automated. People on the Wayfarer team are looking into the account and saying, yeah, I see trends here. This warrants a suspension. So we only see part of the story when someone just puts one screenshot or a screenshot of their email and then they'll put in the body of their tweet. I've done nothing wrong. And they put their, their their email, you've been suspended for 30 days. And then everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people, especially those with world championship backgrounds and gaming chairs, p profile pictures, will say, you've, you've done nothing wrong. Bad Wayfair, bad Niantic, don't use Wayfair. Bah. 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 But when the truth comes out, it's like, oh, well, actually... You submitted the same thing seven times in a row. You appealed it three times. It was denied every time. Your appeals were denied every time. And you continued to submit it. Yeah, that's not right. Or you submitted a sculpture that's in the middle of a lake. There's clearly no pedestrian access. That's not per the criteria. Or you moved something to a spot it wasn't there. Or, or that it's not there. Or you put a fake stop. Or you did it. The truth comes out. We'll never know because they're not going to post that stuff. But in the case of this dude, he actually sent Wayspotters like, because wait, 
I, I love Chris and Jamal are great because they hold people to the fire. They'll be like, yo, you want us to really talk about this and analyze what's going on with your stuff? Send us a, send us a video of your entire Wayfair thing going through it all, and we'll let you know if we see anything jump out at us that's incorrect. And they pick up on anything. And they and the dude did, and they found a million things wrong, and they're like, yep, this suspension tracks. Yep, 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 this is all, and, this is all and right. He's there, and he's like, oh. I guess, you know, so I guess it, I did that. Exactly. So uh, just get, you know, if you want to give people the benefit of the doubt, fine. That's good. Be positive, but be cautiously optimistic about things, you know, because we'll never know. But typically in these cases, the truth does come out and then it's like, yeah, that tracks. Or you go back in their Twitter for, you know, a month or two and you see them saying like, hey, approve everything. It's like, yeah, well, it kind of makes sense that you're not following the criteria here because you clearly were boasting about how you were not following the criteria two months ago, and now you're upset that you're feeling the repercussions? Or someone going, oh, I, I only messed around or did some shenanigans, but that was a year and a half ago. Why am I getting suspended for it now? We all know how slow Niantic is. Of course. Like, yeah, they're just catching up to it now, but you still did it a year ago. It does. There is no statute of limitations on Wayfair abuse. So feel the wrath. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. Let's let's take a uh, let's take a little break. When we come back, yeah, and then we can get into the raid guide. Yeah, well, we'll talk about. Boop, yep, boop, boop, we'll we'll boop, run boop, through boop, November boop, really quick. We'll talk about the festival of lights. We'll do a little raid guide battle party. We'll get up on out of here. Uh, for our video viewers, we'll be here. But for our audio listeners, we'll be back right after this. All right, chat. What's up? Let's let's read the chat. Uh, Casa de Cubone should be a prompt for largest to smallest uh, tried to transfer. Yes, I agree. Let me separate those. Trainer Spooky says, yo, what up? Tell Adam it's Halloween, not Christmas. Oh, because Adam, Adam's got his Christmas sweater. Well, it's an Overwatch, you know, and they're, they're celebrating Halloween, you know, in the game. Dead, games. So dead weight it works out. says, I made it, but barely. Hope all is well. Holy bear face, Adam. <laughs> oh. I know, I know. I mean, it's still, you know, I didn't, like, shave it down to the skin. I got a little bit of little gruff. Yep. Fisher J but says do... we are the video viewers. You do have a little bit of a shadow going. You do have a yeah, little. Is that I by mean, design I... though? No. Well, yeah. I just You're I like... kind of I used I used Manscaped. Doctor McDreamy. I, I did my my uh, my beard trimmer, and I basically just got as much as I could just with the straight you know blade and. Left so uh, that. little little tease here. Uh, very excited to announce that. Special conditions, way spotters, and lured up all signing with Manscaped sponsored all three mm. shows, baby. So uh, if anyone's thinking about buying Manscaped, hold off because we'll have coupon codes and free shipping codes uh, coming really soon. And uh, they have some really cool new products that we'll be showing off. So really cool. Yeah, ball check. Exactly. Your balls will thank you. <laughs> but Adam, we've, we're going long. So you want to get right back let's, in this? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's uh, do that. My mom wants to hang out. She's in the area. Uh, all the way from Arizona. Oh, nice. Grandma Tuttle in the house. Well, she's not in my house. In the proverbial house. She'd be like she'd be like, Can I can I talk to everyone? I need to know how to transfer something. Does she have a southern a accent? Su <laughs> I don't know why she has a southern <laughs> accent, but <laughs> she'd be like, Can I trade someone on here? how do I trade someone? Uh oh, be I like, love Mom, that. you have to be in the same area. I love it. I love it. All right, let's get back. <clears throat> She'd be like, "Can someone send me a raid?" <laughs> I, dude, I I love like the other day. Um, the notifications were like blowing up on Facebook, and we don't get a lot of action on Facebook, but it was just like, "Bing, Bing, 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 Bing," and it was Grandma Tuttle liking every single photo. I was like, "Oh, she's the best." So well, great. I told her I was like, "Mom, if you want to see all the stuff that I did in like Barcelona, you got to like go to our page and yep. like, look." Loved it. Loved it. All right, let's but then, get back but then we were sitting down and she was talking to me and she's like, she's like, oh, just go through my Pokemon and delete stuff so I have space. And I'm like, okay, that's like my job. And then she, I'm looking through her stuff. She's got a shiny Dritagon. I'm like, are you serious, mom? <laughs> Adam, I'm gonna have to uh, report you for uh, account sharing. I'm not sharing her account. <laughs> I still don't have one. We were lucky friends, and I, I don't even remember what we traded. Uh, but it was something Halloween related. That would have been messed up if you traded it to yourself. She'll be like, "Where'd no, that no, shiny no, no, go?" No, no, like no. I, I must have no. deleted it. 
no, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. No, because she's very excited and proud of that one. So, all right, let's get back in this. <clears throat> and, and we're mm-hmm. back from our break. Thank you so much for that. We're back. We are hydrated and caffeinated, so we are good to go. I'd uh, say I'm caffeinated. Look at this, man. I've got I've got both. I know how to do it. I got I got my Dunkin' and I got my Poland Spring. I'm in I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. Uh, but we got a little housekeeping to get through. This podcast is powered by Patreon, and you can check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as a dollar a month. That one dollar will get you access to our patron exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And all patrons are eligible to participate in our monthly Pigo and TCG Live prize tournaments. Registration is in the Discord. We hope to see you there. Uh, huge thanks to our gym leaders, absolutely Ryan, Austin Zard, Bean and Cheese, DJ Wonderbread, Hall to Counselor, GK, Sue, Jamal, Joseph, Mythical Hitch, Beardbo Baggins, and Big Zom Minus. And special thanks to our executive producer, Paul Bott. Uh, Make sure you check out PokemonProfessor.com for links to everywhere you can connect with us, grab some merch, and leave us some reviews. All right, Adam, let's get into November, but we're going to make it real quick. We're going to go pretty quick through this because uh, typically when, when, like, the the content updates come out, I just like skimming through it because, you know, we're not even in November yet, and a lot of this stuff is coming ahead, but... We'll figure it out. So Yeah, you, like we still need to trick or treat, you know what right. I'm saying? But if you look at the left side of the infographic they released, and again I'll put a link in the description to the tweet where you can see this if you're listening to audio. Uh Pokestop showcases have are dominating the calendar. That we have a lot going on with showcases. How are you doing with showcases? Are you still enjoying it? I mean, like our GoFest group text is always popping off whenever their showcase is ending. I always will jump in like with five minutes left and I'll just put snipe showcases and it's like, everyone's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then all of a sudden we get everyone's results page. Are you enjoying these? Cause I'm, I have a blast. Well, Gre- Grieveyard was very, it was low it volume. Was very, it was very low volume. It was very, I don't know. I, yeah. I know we've said frustrated a lot, but it was very frustrating because you only got so many. Right. And then you had to work with what you had. So I had a consistent three for all three of mine. So I didn't win, but I got a consistent three. Okay. Okay. And I feel like I've gotten better rewards from threes before. So I don't know. I don't know if they've changed that up, but I, I've really been enjoying the showcases. I think that it's just a, a, a nice way to, to give it an extra layer of engagement, something else to do. So it's been yeah, and a lot of the stops that I have seen previously that nobody was in, I now see at least one or two people in because I think people are are realizing that they want to go and find those ones that have one or two people and then drop. Well, and again, I'll use Sarah, my girlfriend, as as our casual example here. She got ninth place in the showcase the other day, and she was like so excited. It was like 40-something people in the showcase. She got ninth place. She was like, oh, my God, I made top 10. And it's like, normally, if I got that, I would be like, God darn it. But she was all excited. So I was like, this is great. See, it's like, so I can imagine, like, a young trainer or a new trainer, it gives them really good motivation. So I definitely dig what they've been doing. And you're getting items just for kind of leaving something that you probably transferred. You know what I mean? Yeah, although I did have a a hiccup uh, with Phantom. I was rank one in one of them, rank two in another, and like sixth in another. It's the best I could get. But I was excited about that. But then when the, you know, I was proactive right before. I sniped. I moved things around. I made sure everything. It showed one, two, and six. Eight o'clock rolls around. The reward screen comes up. It only gave me rewards for two, and it didn't give me my first place win. Wow. Why? Why? And Why? What, what's what's in the uh, in the contest right now? Uh, the contests right now are – hold on. What is it? They are Cause, Phantom. Cause, we have Phantoms in right now. So okay. I've, I've so got – I've got. I have one, two, and one. I have two, two, and five right now, but I haven't sniped anything. So I uh, – let's see how many people we got in these. 24 trainers in this one. I've got eight trainers in that one. That's a low one. And 24 in this one. So – you know, this is pretty decent, pretty decent, pretty decent. Um, but no, I'm thoroughly enjoying the uh, the 
the showcases. Hopefully they work out any uh, remaining bugs uh, that they have. But we have a whole month of showcases coming. Uh, Mega Rays, we have Mega Binet right now. Hound Dune is coming. We have a, a mystery one. Um, Garchomp? What do you think? What do you think we're going to get? Uh, a mystery? Yeah, we well, have... Well, is there another spooky one? There's uh, no more spooky. No, but one that would November. be dark would be, for Mega Raid, dark would be Tyranitar, right? No, but it's a mystery one. One that we haven't had yet is coming. Yeah. Oh, we haven't had Tyranitar? No, we've had Tyranitar. We've had him? Oh, my gosh. Adam! You know what, Adam? Let me tell you about this podcast called Lured Up that you can listen to to help you uh, learn about different you know things that happen in the game. I think I just haven't mega evolved mine, Jeez and I think that's, that's the, uh, that's but, the error. But here. we have a uh, a new mega boss coming in November, which is exciting. Uh, Dark Rye, we have Genesect with a Douse Drive that can be shiny coming back around, and then the Swords of Justice. So for a lot of new trainers, this is pretty cool to to see these come back around, and there might be shiny holdout for people. So we're good there. Spotlight Hour, we got Chin Chow. What is that, Baneri? Yep. Oh my gosh. And Dunsparce. That's gonna be a good one. You'll you'll want to go after Dunsparce in lieu of its evolution coming out eventually. Oh, so you definitely good want call. to go after the Hundo. You definitely want the shiny. Yeah, get that extra. Good call. Good call. And then you got sure. you got Spoink. No, Oink Loing, whatever it is. Yep. Lechunk. Lechunk. <laughs> Le Lechunk. Also, uh the November seventh, the first week, um, with Chin Chow, it's double transfer candy. So hold on to your legendaries, hold on to whatever Pokemon you can if it's not gonna, you know, ruin your bag space. And then typically Everything what I'll do ruins my bag space is, right now. All I, the extra extra larges, <laughs> all the extra extra smalls. So what I do is I tag everything. So I'll highlight everything like I'm gonna do the transfer ahead of time. Select, you know, I'll I'll ta and then tag them all with transfer. So that way at 601, you know, 6 p.m. exactly, I can go into my storage, pull up my trade or my transfer Pokemon and get it out of the way by 601. All my transfers are done. I don't have to worry about wasting time during spotlight hour to highlight stuff. Uh, raid hours will be uh, the way they're going to be doing it is one week for everything because we have a five Wednesday month. So we'll have Dark Ride, Genesect, and then Verizian, Cabalion, Terrakian. Uh, I like that. Re research breakthroughs remain in the same. Uh, and events, we have, uh, you know, typically we get a little tease here, and we'll talk about this stuff as we get closer, but uh, we have the Dio de Muertos. We have Community Day happening early in the first week. Festival of Lights we're about to talk about next. Uh, we have a raid day coming. We have Fashion Week coming back. We have a Party Up event. And then Community Day Classic. Ghastly? Shop it? I don't know. Maybe they'll do something like that. I don't know what they're going to do. But uh, we have well, a lot of events. Typically, with these with these things like this, I look to what Pokemon I've seen recently that are just like kind of weird and not like out of the ordinary. Um, and I saw a Mareep, so we could potentially see a Mareep because I saw one and I was like, "What? That's weird. Why do we have that in the wild?" Yes, yes. and uh, that's and I'm just like, eh, they're doing a classic, so. It makes sense. I don't know. I want I want that Mega Garchomp though. I think I hope uh, I hope that comes. But let's keep it moving, Adam, uh, because we do have information on the Festival of Lights. This is another returning event. Uh, Mareep is in the showcase. There, oh, oh, Fisher oh, Fisher I'm J broke the code. He broke the code. He figured it out. Let's go back to the infographic here. Hold on, hold on. Um, let me go back to this. Uh, Mareep is in fact in the showcases. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. It's right there. And that's that's around that time, right? So yeah, Mareep Community oh. Day Classic. You cracked the code there, Fisher. Good job. Yeah, they basically gave us the information. Look at that. Yeah, yep. We have the Yep, yep. The contest and the date. Oh my gosh. Nice, nice. But we do Look have festival. They spoiled of lights. It. Why put yep. it why put a question mark? I know, right? <laughs> well, because people like us that, you know, you just skim over it. Uh but yeah. we have uh Festival of Lights coming. Tadbulb makes its illuminating debut during the Festival of Lights. This is happening November 7th to November 12th. So, again, pretty good. Week and a half heads up on this. So it's it's nice to have, you know, this stuff come so early. Uh, but we have Tadbulb and Bellybolt coming. Uh, really cute, cool-looking, fun Pokemon. Pretty excited about this. Like it. Uh, double Stardust for Hatches. Uh, double Candy for Hatches. And Incense will last twice as long, uh, excluding... Daily Adventure Incense. Come on. They couldn't give us a 30-minute Daily Adventure Incense? Come on. Uh, 
Uh, we will have timed research um, exclusive for free. We have wild encounters, a bunch of electric stuff and, you know, stuff based around uh, light and fire, I guess, because Slugma's in there. But Mareep also in this pool. So Mareep is in there as well. Yeah, see. Mm. I don't necessarily know how I feel about Pikachu and Vulpix being here because we just have we're have Pikachu and Vulpix now. Granted, they won't have costumes, but yeah, but I think it's it's again it's one of those things where they're in that pool, just like Chinchow. I've been seeing a bunch of Chinchow. Yeah, they're in that pool of stuff that we have available. Yep. So I think they're just giving us things that are available in this season. Yep, yep. Uh more lull is probably the chase here in this event outside of the yeah. you know the tad bulb and stuff. Um more lull is definitely a holdout shiny for a lot of people. Uh in eggs we have uh El Elekid, Magby, Dedene, and More Lull. Yo, I still need that shiny Dedene. So I'll be going for that for sure. That's in seven Ks. Uh and then you have incense specific spawns. So remember you're only going to see this if you use an incense, they're going to be attracted more to incense uh, and Morlo and Tadbulb and Dedene all on there. Litleo, another one, but Volbeat and Illumise also in there. Breaking region. Illumise. 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 I just turned into like the godfather there. For a second. <laughs> I don't know why. All right. Um, what else we have here? Field research, Daramaka, Morlo, Tadbulb, Showcases, new avatar item, the, the lantern. That's pretty cool. The, the yeah, but lantern. don't forget to uh, to party up Yep. while playing. And exclusive bonuses for trainers in India. Trainers located in India can look forward to special collection challenge that awards Stardust XP and Encounter with Tadbulb. They can also earn twice the candy for catching Pokemon during the Festival of Lights. Also look forward to a raid day on November 11th. So... All right, we got a good heads up. We can talk about this again next week, but I just wanted to run through it. Uh, new Pokemon can't can't complain, right? We we like new Pokemon. Yeah, PVP is um, evolving. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be new good. Pokemon. It's gonna be good. All right, last last segment of the show, Adam. Let's talk about Shadow Lugia. It's time Shadow for Lugia, a raid guide the and Gale a battle of party. Darkness. Oh, oh, shoot, the wrong one. Sorry. Can you can you at least kick off our song here for us? All right. Hang on, let me just yawn real quick. Uh, good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry. Battle party. Ooh, ooh. Battle party. Ooh, ooh. All right, we are talking about Shadow Lugia, and we're going to be looking <laughs> at PokeBattler.com. Did you say we're going to be licking? We're going to be licking. We're going to be licking website. Shadow Lugia. Um, it tastes great. Um, <laughs> we are looking at it here. Uh, it is weak to rock, ghost, electric, ice, and dark. So plenty of weaknesses here. Nothing double weak. But plenty of weaknesses here that could uh, allow you to have a pretty diverse party. Uh, it says five people here or six trainers here. Uh, again, this is kind of assuming, I believe, if you have uh, no shadow, like the, the gems, you know, if you use the gems, you might be able to get get this with less. I don't know. Um, come on. Why isn't Poke Battler working? Come on. Work for me, Poke Battler. All right. Here we go. So we are going to look at our top raid counters with all the sliders on. Mega Tyranitar up top, Shadow Tyranitar number two, Mega Deancey coming in number three. If you're into using Pokemon that don't always have an opportunity to be used, here you go. Rock Spect, Mega Deancey. Mega Banet, which is in there right now. We just had Mega Gengar, so a lot of opportunity to use stuff that you may have just acquired, which is cool. Uh, Zerkatry is in there. Not a lot of opportunity to use Electric type Pokemon. So that's pretty cool. Shadow Magnezone, Shadow Raikou, Mega Manectric, Shadow Weavile, Shadow Electivire, Mega Houndoom. So a lot of the big hitters up top with only really uh, Zerkatry being a standard Pokemon. I mean, it's an Ultra Beast, but a non-Shadow or non-Mega. So if I go back and deselect Shadow Pokemon and deselect Mega Pokemon, this is what we're looking at. Zerkatry, top dog in the list. That's pretty cool. Electric Spec, Zekrom, uh, Tyranitar with Smackdown and Brutal Swing. How about that for a specking? Uh, Hydreigon, Dark Type, uh, Giratina Origin Form with Shadow Claw, Shadow Force, uh, Therian, Thunderous with Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Darkrai, which is available right now, uh, Golden Go. So that's always fun to see. It's a cute Pokemon. Bax Calibre. Yo, how are you doing with Fridge Bax? Do you have the line yet? Yeah, I have five. I still have five. I haven't that's evolved right, it. That's right. You haven't evolved it? How dare, no. how dare you? 
I still only have two, but I did evolve it. Uh, Weavile, Galarian, Darmanitan, uh, Electivire in there, Raikou, Hoopa, uh, Terrakian. So we've had, we have a very, very diverse lineup here of Pokemon to use because it's weak to so many different things. So um, I built up my party. I'm going to pull it up right now so we can take a look. And, you know, I really wanted to take advantage of the fact that we have such a diverse pool of Pokemon that are that we could use. So I built out my party, and what I'm going to be bringing is six Tyranitar. <laughs> wow. That's so unique. <laughs> One of them, Shadow. It just doesn't show there. So, you know, I got to gotta do my thing. And be an efficient and 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 high damage output trainer, and I've got them built. Okay, leave me alone. That's what I'm doing. Adam, what are you bringing? <laughs> Mega Gengar. Okay. My my newly acquired Guzzlord. Nice. Ty Tyranitar, Weavile, Electivire, and Chandelure. Nice. How uh how far have you uh powered up Guzzlord? Uh. He's like twenty eight something. Okay, I right. didn't have a lot of candies, and every rare candy goes into him right now. Okay, okay, that's uh, he's he's the rare candy receiver. Dude, my rare candies are killing me right now. I'm sitting on like three hundred rare candies, which is which is not normal for me. But I have nothing to put it into because I just have candy on everything. But uh, so is your whole party, Hundos? Yes. Yep. God, Adam does it right, man. Adam knows how to do it. But definitely tag us online. Um, use the hashtag Battle Party and let us know what you're going to be bringing up against Shadow Lugia. Let us know if you get that shiny. Definitely want to get that shiny. That's going to be a good chase uh, this week. But Adam, that's a show. We did it. That is a show. We have done it. Thank you so much to everyone in the chat. Uh, Squid to Beast, thank you so much for stopping by. Fisher, Espion Willow, what's going on? I'm really excited to have all the people in the chat. We really do. Thank you. We're we're having a, such a blast doing this show live on Twitch and, and doing video and clips and all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for checking us out. And uh, other than that, Adam, I believe that is a show. Is that, a, is that in fact a show? That is, in fact, a show. Excellent. Check out PokemonProfessor.com for everything we have going on with the network. You can email us, lured up at PokemonProfessor.com. You can call us, leave us a voicemail, a text, a video, anything inappropriate or not. 732 835 8639. And for everything else, I guess, yeah, that's 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 really a show. Keep training, trainers. Thanks so much. We'll see you next Bye, week. Bye, trainers. Bye, chat. <laughs>